These newspaper article readings are not for the faint-hearted or the squeamish. If you're at all sensitive, I might suggest these aren't for you. Um, if in doubt, check the description below. It'll tell you which topics are covered in this particular episode. Uh, there's both human and animal suicides, and you heard that right. Um, there's also horrific descriptions of injuries, uh, as well as the deaths of youngsters. Um, so don't do it to yourself if you're prone to nightmares, is all I'll say right now. Not all the articles are horrible. Some of them are uplifting, some of them show incredible bravery and heroism. Um, there are near misses. Uh, so these were picked as showing life prior to health and safety, uh, as well as for the crazy and curious details some contain with uh, other miscellaneous happenings um, that kind of struck me enough to uh, post the articles um, to Twitter, uh, despite not having too much relevance to Scotland necessarily. Um, these are worldwide topics. Uh, and. They didn't have any real connection to the projects I was working on and researching at the time. I just happened to have come across them, by the way, kind of thing. So uh, we'll get into them, shall we? What we're going to do here is we're going to do a lucky dip of newspaper articles to really mix them up a wee bit, because while I'm doing the research is I'm obviously coming up with the same kind of terms and things. So, uh, we'll mix them up even further. So to that end, I have all of the newspaper titles and dates of the articles. What has the hat got for us this episode? Let's find out, shall we? This one is an easy first. The Aberdeen Press and Journal for the 11th of October, 1905. This article reads, What to do with our girls? We do not want to raise a lot of female wastrels who will talk of their rights and forget their duties. Teach them to scrub and sew and bake and brew, to cook a working man's dinner as it should be cooked. Teach them to cut down a pair of man's trousers so that a boy may have a pair of knickerbockers. To teach them to know how to put a decent patch on a pair of pants. Teach them to darn socks so that the man that wears them won't wish he had been born a horse to be shod by a smith. Teach them the mysteries of the churn, the wash tub, never mind the mandolin and the harmonium. Bring them up to be useful. Let them know all about fowls and ducks and geese. Teach them to milk a cow and to feed a pig. Show them how potatoes, cabbages and carrots are grown and let them grow them. I was looking at one of the late Phil May's cartoons yesterday. Two city waifs, a boy and a girl, were having a day in the country, said the girl. Billy, let's go mushrooming. Yes, said, replied the boy. Come on, Sal, I'm a beggar to climb. Phil May knew the city waifs as few men of his time knew them. When these children are trained to be healthy, hearty, wholesome work girls, there would be homes waiting for them. The demand will be always greater than the supply for the well-trained material. Why, Australia would take half a million of such lasses at this moment and jump at the chance. What Australia, Canada and our other new lands do not want is a poor little weedy female thing that has had all the vitality sucked out of her by factory existence. Lasses who are helpless outside of a mill, and worse than helpless when they mate and have a home of their own. There is romance as well as business in the scheme that I have outlined. The romance consists of saving many lives. The business lies in the conduct of the farms. A. G. Hales, War Correspondent, in London Opinion and Today, as reported in the Aberdeen Press and Journal for the 11th of October, 1905. And I think that writer A. G. Hales may wish to remain as a war correspondent and stop writing on topics that are perhaps beyond him.
That's horrible, isn't it? Just bring up the the girls to be to be the man servants, you know, to do everything. You know, they must be able and accomplished in everything. You know, I don't know. There's something um, there's something quite distasteful uh, in that article to today's mind. I think you know. I'm very sure that the upper class would have read that and not really associated it with themselves. Um, I don't think they would have seen that as uh, instructions for them. You know, I think that their girls would still continue to learn the harmonium and the, the mandolin and, and perhaps not farmyard work, you know. Um, class divides in that, but oh, it's always been the way of things. On to the next. We have the Scotsman for the 23rd of May 1905. Let's see what this one has for us. Okay, this is a report of an accident playing with a cartridge. A serious accident occurred yesterday afternoon at Cordale Works, Renton. Three weeks ago, a cartridge came into the works among coal and, when found, was laid aside on the top of one of the boilers. Yesterday, the fireman, in attempting to take the bullet from the cartridge, exploded it, his two thumbs and three fingers being partly blown off. The bullet penetrated his left side, inflicting a severe wound, he was removed to the Western Infirmary, Glasgow. And that's for the Scotsman from the 23rd of May, 1905. It's just a clear case of a lack of health and safety. There's no way that a, a cartridge or any kind of explosive would be left anywhere that... Well, I mean, it could do that. But um, on top of one of the boilers, I assume that made it really hot to and more likely to explode so um yeah just a real lack of health and safety in that one um, we'll go again this is the falkirk herald for the 17th of august 1907 Let's see what the falkirk herald has okay this uh the Falkirk Herald is delivering us two articles. We have first the Scott anniversary. The anniversary of the birth of Sir Walter Scott was honoured in Glasgow on Thursday by the decoration of the monument in George Square and a meeting in the evening over which Mr H. H. Williams, principal of the Church of Scotland Training College, presided. The chairman, in proposing the leading toast, referred to the steps which had been taken to remove complaints as to the ineffective teaching of Scottish history in Scottish schools. We then have another article further on the same page. An order has been issued at Peking to the effect that any officer or man found smoking opium will at once be beheaded. Yes, we knew that from a previous episode, don't we? It was the Britain versus Japan who's right on the opium question because Britain were the propounders, they were the proponents and marketers of opium. Japan did not want opium in Japan, unless it was for medicinal reasons. And there we go. Um, China has obviously um, been of the same mind as regards their military, and the fact that they're prepared to behead any of their soldiers in Peking, taking uh, liberties with the drug. So there we go. As for the first article on the Scott anniversary and uh, that last sentence, the complaints as to the ineffective teaching of Scottish history in Scottish schools, it was because I kept hearing the common complaint that Scots and Scots schools weren't getting taught Scottish history. We know all about the Tudors, we know all about Elizabeth I of England, we know all about the her coming up against the Armada, we know all about Bloody Mary and uh, her rise up against the Protestants. I don't know. 
I mean, we don't get taught about the Great Fire of Edinburgh. We don't get taught about so much of Scottish history in context with the English history that we learn in school. You know, what was happening in Scotland at the Wars of the Roses, uh, the Tudors and Lancasters in England, what was happening in Scotland at that time? Who's on the throne at that time? You know, like, I don't know. Um, so I would still agree that there is still ineffective teaching of Scottish history in Scottish schools. I would agree with that statement still. But parents are becoming more engaged these days, especially with uh, the greater interest in Scotland and her affairs recently, that they're actually taking history into their hands and teaching their children, making sure their children um, have the information they wish they had, uh, which is nice. Um, and I encourage that. Definitely, it's it's the way around the uh, centralising system that pervades our education here in Britain. We'll have another one, shall we? This will maybe be our last one. We have the Glasgow Chronicle for the 13th of September, 1848. An older one. Bit of a weird one. Uh, Superstition and the Gallows. A short time since, a woman from the neighbourhood of Watton repaired to the Hertz County Jail and besought the officers to give her a piece of the gallows. Astonished by the unusual application, they asked her what she wanted it for, when she replied that her son was much troubled with fits, and that she had been told a piece of the gallows hung about his neck after going through a certain process of incantation would effectively cure him. The officers reasoned with the woman on the improbability of a piece of wood producing the miraculous effect which she anticipated from it, but she cut short their arguments by the most earnest and touching entreaties that the gentleman would give her a bit for the sake of her poor son, and it being impossible to refuse her solicitations, a fragment of the implement of death was given to her, which she folded carefully in her handkerchief and, expressing her unbounded thanks, went home rejoicing. And that's from the Glasgow Chronicle for the 13th of September, 1848. And that is weird. I, I don't know where she heard that. I, I've never heard any connection of the any instrument of death with healing properties. Although, as I'm saying that, the Christians um, believe that they're crucifix, the instrument of Roman capital punishment. Um, apparently that symbol has a healing or mystical or um, cathartic properties. Um, so I guess maybe she was doing it in the same spirit. Um, I mean, besides that, I can't really think of anything that would have led her to those actions uh, into trying so hard to obtain a, a piece of the gallows. Um, very strange. There you go. And we end on that strangeness. So, uh, yeah, we may see you next time. Enjoy it! <laughs>